the start of a brand new week and I am already quite overwhelmed. I'm currently in the middle, I'm not in the middle, I'm currently in the process of editing last week's vlog which is going up tomorrow. I have a busy day tomorrow so I won't have time to finish the editing tomorrow which means I need to get it all done tonight. I still have an hour of footage to go through but I am taking reading breaks because I'm currently reading The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Miss Bond trilogy and also this month's book for Cosmere Along which I'm co-hosting. I think the live show for this at the moment is going to be on the 16th. 16th of May. I can't tell you too much about this yet. I'm only on page 61 and it is an epic fantasy so it will be a while until I have a good grip of the plot but I am enjoying it a lot so far. I'm really really loving it. I have read books by Brandon Sanderson before so I know that I like his stories and I know that I like his writing style but I'm very excited to be getting into Miss Bourne which is apparently one of his best series. Probably second only to the Stormlight Archives. So when I know a little bit more about this I will surely come and tell you about it if you have not read this and want to know what it's about but at the moment I'm still discovering that for myself. This is my last main book for the Oz Magical Readathon so I do have to read this before the end of Thursday which is a terrifying thought when I'm on page 60 at 10 p.m on Monday night but I am using this for the prompt for charms which is to read a book with a white cover. That is my last prompt that I need for my career of Potioneer and it will also be my 11th owl. I'm so close to passing all of the owls for the first time ever and I'm so damn determined to actually do it. So you can expect a lot of sleepless nights in this vlog while I get this book done and also read another randomly generated book. I don't have too much to update on. Oh actually no I do have something. I do also have these which I received in the post today from my Amazon wish list. so thank you so much if you have gifted me one of these wonderful wonderful books. I'm not opening them yet I'm saving them until my birthday which you will be watching this video either the day before my birthday or on my birthday so I am saving these until then but if you have sent me a gift then it has a arrived and I am of course as usual eternally grateful. So that is actually all I have to update on so I guess I'm gonna go back to reading my book and getting my vlog edited. So it took me a hot minute but I'm finally ready to get this vlog rock and rolling properly. So yesterday was a pretty crappy day. You know when you have those days where you have a lot to get done and everything that could possibly go wrong goes wrong? Yesterday was not supposed to be a super intense day for me but just nothing was working as it's supposed to work and so I spent the majority of the day doing something that really should not have taken that long which led me to have a little bit of a strop and get in bed and read and sulk for a bit but I do feel much better today. It is around 2 p.m. I've had quite a productive morning and early afternoon. I was woken up really early by a delivery driver and when it gets to like 8, 9 a.m. if I wake up and have to get out of bed for any reason then I just stay up because there's really no point going back to bed. So I've been up for quite a while. I've done a little bit of reading. I've packed some plaque orders. I've just filmed my Bookopoly TBR which honestly it was a hot mess because my white balance kept getting thrown out but I will have to edit that later and hopefully I'll be able to pull everything together. So now I'm just popping in to let you know a little bit about The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson then I'm going to go and do a little bit more reading before cracking on with packing a ton of candle orders through the late afternoon. So first off I am absolutely adoring this book. I am 288 pages into it so at this point I should have been 
over halfway. If I want to get this done by tomorrow night, I'm trying not to worry about that too much and just believe in my power to get through it. Once I've packed candle orders today, I don't have anything else that I need to do today. That will be my to-do list done. Oh, I do need to edit my Bacopoli video, but I, I feel like I'm going to have a little bit more time than usual today, so hopefully I'll be able to read a huge chunk of this. So whenever anybody talks about this series, they talk about the magic system. This is an adult epic high fantasy and the magic system revolves around metal. So the characters in this book that wield magic have the ability to harness the power of certain metals by ingesting them. Now there are eight base metals, two stronger metals, and there is rumour of a very powerful 11th metal. The powers in this book are really cool. I mean ingesting metal to harness abilities does sound a little bit weird, but I really love the manifestation of the magic system. My favourite ability in this book are the steel and iron abilities I believe, which allows you to push and pull metal. Now thinking about that it doesn't sound too exciting, but the way these characters use it is that they pretty much fly around by anchoring themselves on different metal objects via pushing and pulling. Now the magic in this world is not all powerful, there are only a handful of people who can actually harness all of the metals. The world is split between Scar and the nobility. The nobility do have Allomancy in their blood, but it's still quite rare, and the majority of Allomancers can only harness one of the ten metals, and if you can harness all of them, then you are what is known as a Mistborn. So in this book, the first main character we meet is Kelsia. He is a Mistborn, he's in his 30s, and for some reason that we don't know about at the beginning of the book, he was sent to this place called the Pits of Hathson, which is where criminals are pretty much sent to die. You are never expected to survive the pits. Before Kelsia was sent to the pits, he was the most notorious crime lord in Lutherdell. He was extremely popular, extremely good at what he did, and he had a really strong crew. And this book takes place after Kelsia has escaped the pits and he is putting together a new crew for the very big, very daunting, very impossible task of overthrowing the Lord Ruler who is a person, I'm going to say, who has ascended to God level. They treat him as a god in this book even though originally he was a man who is this all-powerful immortal ruler. So while Kelsia is putting together this mission he does come across Vin who is our other main character. Now Vin is a street rat. She runs with crime gangs, not the powerful crime crime gangs that have the power of allomancy, but the very low-born crime gangs who scrape and steal just to get by. She has had a very troubled upbringing. Her brother used to beat her before he abandoned her, and now she is pretty much in the care of this crew who only keep her around because she has this thing that she refers to as luck, which allows her to influence other people. Now, when Kelsia comes across Vin, he sees that she does not have something called luck. She is actually an allomancer, and it turns out that she's actually quite a powerful for one, so he begins to train her in the art of allomancy, and those two main characters and their relationship is just... I love it. I love it, guys. I didn't expect the magic system to be so cool with all of the flying around. It's like some superhero shit. It's like martial arts superhero shit. Like, people who are immensely trained. The way that Kelsia wields his abilities is so outside the box that it's just epic. I do really like Vin. Because of her upbringing, she is quite cagey, she's quite tense, and she's quite paranoid. And following her can be a little bit annoying throughout the beginning of this book because of that. How However, it is realistic to her character, it is realistic to what her behaviour would be like, and as she begins to train with Kelsia, she begins to grow into herself, and I'm really liking the character that she is becoming. So the main plot of this really took me by surprise, because the main thing that is going on here is Kelsia and his crew, now including Vin, are trying to execute this plan of overthrowing the Lord Ruler, and as I said, this is pretty much an impossible task. This guy's been in power for the last thousand years, he's immortal, no Nobody knows how to do it, but they have put a strategy together and the book follows the steps that they are taking to execute this plan. So this is a rebellion plotline. The setup for this book is what if the Dark Lord won, so what if the prophesied hero failed and the Dark Lord is the one that came into power. That premise was a little bit confusing to start off with because if you think of pretty much any fantasy series we usually start in a world that is oppressed. So while the Dark Lord maybe never won originally however many years ago we are in a place of oppression and that is where this story starts out. However at the beginning of every chapter you do get a little paragraph that is from somebody's perspective and I've just at this moment found out who it was. But I do believe that that prophesied hero Dark Lord plotline is actually going to come to the surface 
office and become relevant because my first thought going into this is like what is the relevance of this 1000 year old war that was won by the Dark Lord when we're starting pretty much at the same place we would start any fantasy series. I did think as well when I started out that this book is a little bit handholdy with the way that it explains the magic system. It pretty much introduces everything to you through the eyes of Vin. So Vin takes the place of the reader and Vin is asking all of the questions so she's like what do you mean by allomancy and Kelsey will explain it to her and then Kelsey will say burn this metal and she burns it and he'll say no you're burning steel this means you can do this. So I did find that aspect to be very handholdy but one of the things that I always praise Brandon Sanderson on, one of the things I really love about his work is that he is extremely accessible. This book is a lot of things, this series is a lot of things that is very common in adult high and epic fantasy but one thing it is not is dense. A young adult reader could very comfortably go into this series and understand everything that is going on which is what makes Brandon Sanderson a perfect transitional author for those who are looking to jump from young adult fantasy to adult fantasy. So I do see how that feeds into this idea of Brandon Sanderson being a transitional author. I think it's because the adult epic fantasy that I have been reading most recently is of the dense variety where you have to really dig for clues yourself, you have to dig for the foreshadowing, you have to figure everything out as you go along and for the majority of the story you do not actually know the extent of the magic and the world and the politics that's going on because the author withholds the information from you. But in Mistborn, Brandon Sanderson does give you all of the information to start off with. It's a tad info dumpy, it's a tad spoon feedy, but the characters and the plot so far are really making up for that for me. There are a couple of things I did not expect from this book as well. One is that it's funny and it's funny in a modern humour way and the other is that the setting is a lot more modern than I expected it to be. I mean I have read Elantris by Brandon Sanderson so I do know what to expect from his fantasy but it has been a while and every time I pick up one of his books I'm always surprised yet again by his writing style. The book is relatable, it's funny, something that you don't get from a lot of adult fantasy that Brandon Sanderson gives you is an immediate connection to his characters. So these characters are immediately likeable. They're not really strict and formal in their presentation. They use almost modern dialect. They were pretty modern clothing but that's down to the type of world that this is more than being cool and relatable. But the characters are instantly likeable. You don't have to dig through this layer of historical language to be able to connect with them and that is something that I do find is often missing from adult fantasy. If you compare this just to Game of Thrones which is the most recent full adult epic fantasy series that I've written and by full I mean I've read everything published because the series isn't complete but while you can like characters in Game of Thrones you really have to work to discover the qualities that you like about them. Like I like Jamie Lannister because he has a heart of gold but he's a bit of a bastard but he's not instantly likeable on the page. You have to add up all of his qualities to decide whether he's a like character or not whether you personally like him. With this these characters are written so you love them and the thing that I really like about that is that it paves the way for a great deal of emotional impact because I don't think that Brandon Sanderson holds punches and I believe that he does have some pretty impactful endings. So what it does is it sets me on edge, it makes me worry about these characters especially as we have two main characters in here and one is slightly older than the other one. I'm, I'm concerned, I'm worried and I'm a little bit scared about what this book is going to do to me. I am 100% invested in it and I'm 100% loving the journey that this is taking me on so far and I just at this moment I don't want it to end like I do because I want to complete the book, complete my Bookopoly TBR and also complete the Elves Magical Readathon but enjoyment wise I'm really loving it, I'm really getting into the plot now and we have new characters introduced and I want to know what their agenda is and I, yeah I'm just eating it all up essentially. So when I sat down in front of the camera I did not actually realise that I was going to have so much to say about this book. It it's interesting how that happens. Like I can read a book and think like, okay, I like this, I don't like this, but I don't have too many thoughts. And then as soon as I turn my camera on, apparently I've been retaining all this information that just pours out of my brain. So that's where I'm up to with this. I do foresee, I was gonna say I do foresee me reading this for the majority of the week, but I'm starting this vlog late. So it's no Wednesday. I need to finish this by tomorrow. So I'm assuming I'm gonna bring you my full thoughts on this tomorrow. Keep your fingers crossed for me, even though by the time you're watching this, it's already happened. I've already 
already succeeded or failed. But um, yeah, I need to have that finished tomorrow by midnight because I'm going to go and just read a little bit then pack candle orders now. I have to go do a food shop and I have to edit Bookopoly. But I do think that's going to leave me with a lot of time in between those activities and also after those activities where I'm going to be able to get a little bit of reading done. So that is pretty much how I'm going to be spending my day. You know, it's interesting what a good night's sleep can do. And to be fair, actually, I only got five hours. I think it might be my productive boost this morning. But yesterday, like last night, everything just seemed so hopeless because I am working so much and I am so thankful for your guys' support. You guys that support me by buying candles or even by watching my videos because ad revenue, while it is not a lot and at the minute it's really not a lot because of the current global economic situation, but it still, it still helps. Every little helps and I'm so thankful for everything that you guys do. But with everything that's going on, stock is hard to get hold of. So I'm working flat out as much as I can. I'm trying to keep stock. I'm trying to get through all of my orders and across three different things, you know, I have two businesses, my candles and the plaques, which require me to hand make products and then package them and ship them out. And then I also have YouTube. I have a YouTube schedule of three videos a week. So I need to film those videos and then I spend a great deal of time editing them. And between all three, it can be a lot. And last night, everything seemed so hopeless, but today I'm halfway through my day and the end is in sight and I'm really chill and enjoying it because the thing about me is that if I did not have all of this stuff to do I would go absolutely insane I need to be kept busy and I have needed to be kept busy for quite a number of years now it's definitely a mental thing it's probably not the healthiest but I am happiest when I am busy I have to have my hands and my mind activated at once but occasionally it just seems like a lot and last night it was really overwhelming but this morning everything's perfectly fine and I'm in my happy place again. So it's interesting what perspective and a night can do. I don't really know why I went on that tangent but I guess what I'm saying is if you're struggling right now with maybe being in lockdown and not being able to go out, if you have an increased workload, if you're struggling to find a new routine with having to work from home then it will be okay. We will all be okay. You will find your balance and sometimes a good night's sleep and a fresh perspective is all you you need. Hey guys, it's Thursday, it's midday. I have 217 pages of The Final Empire left to read and 12 hours to read it in. I've decided I'm having a little bit of a day off today. I'm not having a complete day off because I do have to make my thumbnail for Bacopoli and get that scheduled to go up. And I also have a live show at 5 p.m. on Keris's channel where we're sorting books into Hogwarts hoses. I will put the link to that down in the description box if you would like to go check it out. It's myself, Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction, Keris of course from Library of Keris and Beth from Books Nest. So I have that at five. I need to sort out my video before then, make sure that it's all okay and make the thumbnail. But I also really, really need to finish this. So I'm not going to do much work today. If I finish this, I may then go do some work. I haven't had a day off in three weeks. I have stuff that needs to be done which is why I don't really take days off. I did take last Friday afternoon off, but that's about it. And I didn't really want to take a day off because Tuesday is my birthday. So I'll be taking all of Tuesday off and not working at all, aside from filming my birthday unboxing video. But my body is just giving up on me. That's a little bit dramatic. It's not all that bad. But I pulled a muscle just underneath my right shoulder blade. It must be two weeks ago now. And it's just not really healing. It still aches quite frequently. And then when it starts to ache, I start to compensate with my posture which is making the back of my neck ache which is a common thing that you get when you're doing work where you're always looking down or at a desk but my body's kind of used to that now so I haven't had neck pains in absolutely ages but the compensation that my muscles are doing for my shoulder is making everything hurt so as well as that I'm just kind of getting a little bit stressed so I'm kind of taking the day off I'm taking the day easy let's say and I'm just gonna finish my book so that I can be a badass potioner for the Owl's Magical Readathon. Now that I'm awake actually I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the last 200 pages of this and I pretty much assumed that I wouldn't be able to complete divination because I wouldn't have time to even read a graphic novel when I'm done with this but I'm actually feeling pretty optimistic about that now so we'll see how today goes 
does. I'm really loving this by the way. I've started to distrust one of the main characters which is upsetting me because I really like them but I'm not sure whether it's because they are actually distrustful or whether it is because we're reading from the perspective of a character who always looks for the worst in everybody. So um, we'll see how that goes. We've had a couple of revelations about this whole Lord Ruler situation that I was talking about which is kind of interesting to me. And I'm also wondering whether this plot is going to be cyclical and whether the mistakes of the past are going to be repeated which I really hope they're not but it is just a little thought, a little theory that I had. And I also, ouch. <laughs> I also really really love one of the new characters that was introduced. He's not in it a whole lot but it's Eland who is one of Vin's, not really friends but if you've read The Final Empire you'll know who Eland is and if you haven't then you won't care but I really like Eland anyway. So I'm gonna go, I think I'm going to try and read in 50 page bursts so I'm going to read 50 pages of this, go start out my video, read 50 pages, probably go and get dressed and just go on like that until I'm done. So it's almost 5 p.m. It's 4.45. I'm getting ready to join the live show on Keris' channel. I am currently on page 513 of The Final Empire. So I have around 130 pages left. I'm making decent progress. I had to stop at around 4 to get ready for the live. And I've also just responded to a few emails. I really love what's going on. Vin has just had a really badass moment that I really appreciated. Still confident I can get this done today. I'm not sure how long the live show is going to be. I would hazard a guess at around an hour to... 90 minutes but even if it's two hours I will still have five hours to read 160 pages so I think I'm gonna get there just in the nick of time. I will of course update you over the next few hours to see whether I make it to the end before the clock hits midnight but I'm gonna go and join the live show now. I hope you guys enjoyed it if you watched it and like I said if not and you would like to see it the link will be in my description box. So the time is 21.41. I have 91 pages of the final empire left. I've just taken a break to eat and I'm going to dive back in. I have two hours and 20 minutes left. I'm currently averaging at about 40 pages per hour. So it seems like we're gonna be taking this right down to the wire. I've just refilled my drink, got myself comfortable on a cushion on the floor and I'm gonna try and power through the last almost 100 pages. My main goal at the moment is to get to page 600. So that's 47 pages. And then I'll probably take a very short break of about five minutes and then go for the last 43. So I haven't quite made it to the page 600 mark yet, but I did just make it to the end of part four. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I'm not super upset. I, mm, I can't say anything in this vlog. I really can't say anything, but I knew it was coming. I could see what was happening and what a certain character was doing throughout the book. And I wasn't sure whether they had a plan or whether it was just like a contingency plan kind of thing. Like in case something happened, this thing would be left behind. I thought it would happen at some point I didn't know if it would happen in the first book I didn't know whether it would happen at the end of the series I'm sad about it but I'm not too sad about it I find I, I suspected you know I prepared myself for the worst the worst came but I'm I'm sad about it I finished it I finished the book. I don't even know what time it is. 23.44, I have 16 minutes to spare. I finished it with 16 minutes to spare. I really, really loved that ending. <sighs> I think the book could have ended earlier, to be fair. I can't say that for sure because I haven't read the sequel, so I don't know where the rest of the series goes, but this definitely wraps up nicely. I don't need to do this now. What I need to do is take a little break because my brain is addled and then come back and tell you about it properly. I'm gonna say 
say this is definitely a five stars. I haven't put it into my spreadsheet yet, but it's probably going to be five stars. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna update Twitter to say that I've finished. I'm going to have a bathroom break because I'm dying here. Put all of this stuff into my spreadsheet and then come back and let you know my thoughts and give you a rating. Sadly though, actually just before I do go, as I only have 16 minutes left, I don't have time to read another book, not even a graphic novel. So I will be finishing The Owls with 11 completed, which is good work. I'm pissed off because <laughs> I was one away, but 11 is great and I can be a potioner now because this was the last one I needed. Hey, I'm back. It definitely 100% did come out as a five star read when I put it through my spreadsheet and it actually came out as my second highest rated book after Crescent City. So this is my second favourite book of the year so far and it is definitely deserving. Like I knew that without putting it into my spreadsheet. So I believe, was it yesterday I was talking to you? I think it was yesterday. This day has felt extremely long because I've spent the majority of it reading. But I said that I wondered if the whole what if the Dark Lord thing would become relevant and it definitely did. Yeah, I really like how Brandon Sanderson wraps everything together because he does bring every kind of thing together to make sense, which I always appreciate when I'm reading fantasy because you guys know I'm extremely logic based when I read books. I really love the ending to this. It definitely hit me in the feels. There was a point, obviously, you know, I checked in with you where shit got real and I wasn't happy about it, but I definitely, I saw that coming. I, yeah, I just loved it. Considering I went on a big ramble <laughs> yesterday, I don't really have too much more to say about the book without going into spoilers, which I'm obviously not going to do, but it's definitely a five star read. I loved how it all wrapped up. I was right about the fact that the book is so character driven. It means that it's going to deliver a few emotional punches. I'm not an overly emotional reader, but it definitely delivered on those emotional punches. I, I didn't cry or anything, but I felt it. The magic system continued to be really cool throughout. There was a romance plotline in here that I didn't expect that was just super sweet. I don't really have too many criticisms of it. The pacing, there were a few parts in the middle where I was like, okay, this bit is a little bit slow. However, everything does become relevant. It is the character building, like I said it would be. And overall, considering it's a 650 page book, it is pretty evenly paced. I would say that the action scenes come at the right times to break up the slower character building moments and the political aspects of the plot. I absolutely loved the found family in here. I love the main character of Vin. I love the main character of Kelsia. So the character elements in this are 100% well done. I'm really excited to get to the second book in this series. Honestly, I would read it now if I could, but I can't because I have to start on my main TBR now. But yeah, I absolutely love this and would recommend if you have not read Brandon Sanderson or tried Miss Bond already. Definitely a great transitional book between young adult and adult and also proof that adult fantasy doesn't have to be dense and stuffy as a lot of people regard it to be and proof that we can have young adult themes and young adult type plot lines in adult novels because the one thing that I think Brandon Sanderson does really well in this is it's compelling and relatable. It has those themes that adult readers who read young adult really love but it is very much an adult book and I would love to read more fantasy like this in the future. So I'm going to go to bed. I'm not sure that I'm going to read anything else today honestly because my brain is frazzled. I also don't know what I'm going to be picking up. I will get one of the contenders. So the first book from my actual May TBR I'm going to be starting is Burn by Patrick Ness because this is released on the 7th of May and I received a review copy from Walker Books so I want to read this before the time. I don't really know too much about this one. I accepted this book when it was offered to me because it contains a dragon but it is in a setting that I have never really experienced before. It's a young adult fantasy that takes place in Washington State in the 1950s and it follows a family who have hired a dragon to work on their farm which is something that apparently only poor people do. So that is the extent of my knowledge on this. I will definitely be picking this up very soon if it is not the immediate next book that I pick up. But what I need to do now is I need to go and add up all of the pages in my May TBR. I need to decide what I'm reading for Believeathon and I need to find out what my pages per day count is that I'm going to have to read in May. And if I do have a little bit of leeway, I'm actually going to start reading Whispers in the Dark by KJ Sutton and Jesse Elliott. KJ Sutton is the author of Fortuna Swan, which is a book that I read and loved 
right at the beginning of April. It was the first book I read in the month and I immediately read the sequel. It's also the reason that I failed my owls and I will get back to the owls in a minute actually to let you know what's going on with that. But Kelsey, who is KJ Sutton, was kind enough to send me a review copy of Whispers in the Dark that is a brand new release. It was released on the 28th of April. It's the first part in a four part serial. It's 95 pages and each part is going to be released every two weeks over the next eight weeks. Now I was going to wait for a full bind up of all four which will be coming when they're all released and read it as a physical copy. However Kelsey did very kindly email me a copy of Whispers in the Dark earlier this evening. So thank you so much Kelsey for that because I'm very excited for this one. I don't really know too much about it but I believe it is a new adult paranormal romance that follows a vampire princess. I've heard great reviews from the people who've already read it, the people who received art copies because people have been sharing it on Twitter and Instagram etc and I believe it's a little bit smutty and you guys know I like my smut. So I will try and pick that one up next if I possibly can but for the Oz Magical Readathon my final book was The Final Empire. This one completed the prompt for charms which was to read a book with a white cover and on my April Bacopoli this was to fulfill the prompt to read a adult fantasy I believe. This is also the Cosmere Along book of the month which is a read along of the majority of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere created by Rachel from Rachel Marie. I'm a co-host of the read along and the live show for this is going to be on the 16th of May on Kaz from the Little Book Girls channel. So that is all I have for you at the moment. It is 12.30. I'm going to go and sort out my spreadsheet, see if I can fit in Whisper in the Dark. I'm probably going to do it anyway and I'm probably going to regret it because at this minute when the first day of the month hasn't really started I feel pretty much invincible and like I can read everything because oh actually when I finished The Final Empire I did actually just smash my best reading month ever by 83 pages and man does it feel like I did because I read a whole ton in April. So I'm gonna go sort out my spreadsheet, figure out if I can read Whisper in the Dark, probably decide that I can't and then do it anyway and then regret everything in about three weeks. Hey so in a really weird turn of events I have actually just ordered a massive Mistborn art print. When I say massive I think it's like 61 centimeters by 81. I don't really know why I've done it. I mean I loved Mistborn, I loved it so much and every time I think about it at the moment I do feel a little bit sad but the print that I bought is from the third book so it's not even something I've read yet but I just know that I'm gonna love the series and the print is absolutely stunning. I will show you guys because I think I have it open still on my computer. So here she is. We have all of the alimantic symbols around the edge and I believe that this is the backdrop of the final ruler's palace and here we have my babies Eland and Vin. So yeah I saw it. It was stunning. I was looking up Miss Bond fan art and I saw this one and I loved it. So that is on its way to me in this extremely large size. I did get sent my birthday money today from one of my family members so this is pretty much what I spent it on. I've also bought two frames, one to frame this and one to frame some art that I already have so they should arrive hopefully next week and I'll get on with that. I'm really excited because I've been looking for fan art because I really want some fan art because that's the main thing that I'm interested in and my walls are better. I need decoration but I've been discovering recently that it's really hard to buy art like a lot of the artists that you see everywhere don't sell their art like their shops don't have anything in them which is really frustrating when I love an artist and I love the work they do and I can't buy it. I've also started A Whisper in the Dark. I won't tell you anything about it just yet. It is only 97 pages. I'm just under halfway and I don't feel like I'm going to be able to give you too much of an extensive plot with the first part only being really short but I will let you know what I think of it when I'm done with that anyway. It's 10 p.m. I made a ton of candles today. I'm currently in the living room reading A Whisper in the Dark while Curtis plays Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds. That is a PlayStation 2 Buffy the Vampire Slayer game I played when I was a kid and while we're doing our rewatch we've yet to start season six of Buffy but we watched the end of season five and I cried and so did Curtis. We're two episodes into season three of Angel now and I think the watch order is three episodes of Angel and then back into Buffy. So we couldn't play Chaos Bleeds before because it's set around like the timeline of season five and Curtis hadn't seen it so I didn't want him to be spoiled for anything even though I don't really think there are spoilers. So he's playing that. We were going to take it in turns playing but he's having so much fun with it that I was like you know what I've played it before you can play it I'll play it some other time. So he's playing that and I'm reading on the sofa at the moment but I do kind of want to get a bath soon. I'm having issues with stock again not candle stock this time or the stock but because of that I've ended up having another pretty chill day today because I've only really made 
lit candles. Tomorrow I have to film and edit my wrap up and I also have the live show for Le Guin Along which will be on Ashley's channel. Once again if you did miss that and you would like to hear our thoughts on the Wizard of Earthsea I will link that one down in my description box as well. So I have a YouTube intensive day tomorrow and then Sunday will probably be packing orders. I'm glad I had a reasonably chill day yesterday because I did need it and I do feel a lot better today but the next few days I need to be a little bit more productive I think. I'm just popping in before I film my April wrap up, which to be honest, I've just filmed an Illumicrate unboxing as well. You will notice that I always procrastinate when it comes to filming a wrap up because while I really like the finished product, the videos, like the raw footage themselves are actually quite long. And even though I do two a month, like I started doing two a month to make it a little bit easier for myself. But now that I'm reading so much, it can still be kind of painful doing any type of wrap up. So I have been procrastinating a little bit it's now like 3 p.m and i have to film that make a start on editing make dinner and then be ready for the laguna long live show at 8 p.m so i've got quite a daunting task ahead of me for the rest of today but like i said i think i told you yesterday that today would be quite a youtube heavy day but i'm just checking in to let you know that i finished whisper in the dark which is the first part of the charlie travesty serial by kj sutton and jesse elliott i gave this one three stars but not because i disliked it at all. This is a adult paranormal story or new adult paranormal story that follows a young vampire called Charlie Travesty who is the princess in a city that I believe is New York or was New York before something happened to make it into this city called New V where vampires rule. In this book vampires are supreme above everything else. There's like water nymphs and fairies. It's a very oppressive world. Charlie's father, the king of the vampires, has like seven seven or nine wives I believe and they're essentially like concubines and humans are very poorly mistreated. All of the city is like separated into districts and the days have reversed so normal society like happens during nighttime and daytime is a period of sleep to reflect the habits of vampires. So it's kind of a typical urban fantasy setting with vampires being the dominant species in this world and I enjoyed the setting fine. I like the main character. We were introduced to a few male characters. I really like Noah who was only introduced a little bit later on and I'm very intrigued to see where that goes. I enjoyed the plot which is that the main character Charlie is on the eve of her awakening which is something that happens when vampires are around 23 and they go to sleep one night, they wake up and their eyes have changed colour and that colour denotes what kind of faction they're going to be in for the rest of their life. So if they have one colour eye they're going to go into the army. If they have a different colour then they'll end up in entertainment and it is hinted at that this is a really weird system of dividing the public. So it's the eve of her awakening and when she wakes up in the morning, things do not go as expected. So I liked the plot. My issue with this is not even an issue. You guys know I don't like short stories. I don't like short things. And when I read any fantasy book, I don't really make any judgment on the first 100 pages because in the first 100 pages of any type of fantasy, it's pretty much set up for what is to come. So you're expected not to really understand anything. You're expected to really not be forming attachments to anything. So while I enjoyed this, it was just the first 100 pages of a larger serial. I definitely like where it was going. I liked everything about it. It just wasn't very much for me to go on. I do anticipate that I'm going to enjoy the later books or the later parts a lot more, especially because like I said, we had the introduction of that character that I really like, who I'm not sure if they're going to be a love interest yet, but they may be. And I'm very excited to see how that's going to unfold because 
because there was a little bit of a scene with some sexual tension that I definitely appreciated. But yeah, solid start to the serial, but it is just the start. Three stars. But I will be continuing and I anticipate that I will really enjoy the rest of the series. So I finished that at like one in the morning, but I have only been going to sleep at three. So I did start Burn by Patrick Ness. I told you a little bit what this was about the other day and I'm not going to add to that right now because I don't actually know. I'm only 80 pages into this. I anticipate when I'm around the 150 page mark, I'll be able to give you a little bit more information. But like I said about Charlie Travesty, the first 100 pages of a fantasy, you don't really get a whole ton from it. It is just background knowledge and setup that lodges itself in your brain for the rest of the book to come. What I will say about this is that it does have strong themes of racism in here. It's set in 1957 in Washington State, which in this book, I'm not sure if it's true to the history of America, but Washington is one of the most progressive states. And our main character is actually biracial. Her mother is black or her mother was black. She passed away and her father is white and her best friend is Japanese. And there is a lot of racism in here from one particular character, but these characters do all own farms as well. So as you can expect, rural America, 1950s, quite a bit of racism in here. Also a hint at sexual assault, but nothing graphic, but I would say that the racism is definitely present. So if you are sensitive to themes of racism, this book does contain quite a few slurs and the prejudice that was present in 1950s America. It is very specific racism as well. Like one of the characters is Japanese, one is biracial. So it's not just racism flat based on the color of skin, if that makes sense. It's very much like, I don't like you because you are specifically Japanese and all of the stuff that happened with World War II, Pearl Harbor, etc., is what stoked the animosity for this. And this is only like 10 or so years after the end of World War II. So be wary of that going into it. Don't know too much about the plot yet, so I will be back to give you more information on that. But I'm enjoying it so far. I like it more than A Monster Calls so far. A Monster Calls was one of Patrick Ness's like way earlier book. So it is expected that I would enjoy this more. I do like the writing. I do think it's a little bit, I don't want to say it's overwritten in some parts because it could just be Patrick Ness's style at the moment and I haven't quite gotten used to it yet but I'm intrigued about the story and I'm enjoying it. So those are my updates that's where I'm up to so far. I like I said need to go film that wrap up but first I need to work out all my stats and stuff that's another reason I procrastinate on my wrap up and yeah get myself some food before my live show. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll bring you further news when I know a little bit more about the plot of this one. Hey guys so it is currently 8 40 a.m. I did the live show last night and then we just stayed talking for hours and hours and hours. One by one, everybody dropped off. Gav went first, then Cody, then finally at around 7.30 a.m. this morning, Jade left, which just left Ashley and myself. You think it got to like half four in the morning and we decided that we just were not going to sleep tonight because there was pretty much no point. So after Jade left, Ashley and I decided that we were just going to edit together while still in a video call. So Ashley is here. There she is. There you go, you can see her. And she's going to be editing her vlog while I edit my wrap up that has to be up in, I can't do maths, nine hours actually, I've got plenty of time. Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we do this? Actually, as you can see from the curtains, daylight is peeking through because it is now nearly 9 a.m. So I'm going to turn all of my artificial lighting on, crack those curtains open and finish this video. And then I may have to just come and wrap up this vlog actually because I'm not sure how much reading I'm going to be doing today with me being half asleep. Hey, <laughs> so it's just gone midnight now. I did end up sleeping for a little bit, but I'm only here to wrap up the vlog because I haven't read a page today. I asked Curtis to wake me up at 3 p.m. and he only woke me up at 5. So I've eaten, I've got my video up and I've spent the rest of the evening packaging candle orders and now I'm going to go and read in bed. So sadly I don't have anything else to say about burn as of yet. I will give you an update on that at the beginning of next week's vlog and I should definitely be finishing it next week as well. So I do hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you've made it this far, if you have then please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows. With guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.